Welcome back, Zero K fans, to another exhibition match. This is Google Frog versus Shadow Fury on. Sorry, Google Frog versus Sacktoth. I wasn't playing this match. What am I saying? I'm I'm Shadow Fury. Sacktoth is one playing. I'm sorry. I'm just getting into an argument on the chat regarding the use of they. But because using he as a gender specific or as a supposedly gender non specific pronoun is alienating. I'm sure to anyone who's watching who's female. Or transsexual, or transgendered, or gender fluid, or whatever else that isn't in a specific category labeled male. So, in the interest of making sure that no one feels uncomfortable when they're playing, I use they. And they is a perfectly valid gender non specific nominative singular pronoun. Despite what Kara Perro may say. So, anyways, I was saying, back to more relevant stuff. Sign Toth vs. Google Frog and In Cult of Wet. This is a map that is pretty much all water, it's designed. This game was meant to test sea balance because there's been a lot of sea balance changes recently. I've gone over them a bit before, but we're going to be going over them again because actually, okay, not a lot has actually changed. It's a lot of subtle things, but basically a lot of sea balance has been going through various changes over the course of the last few months. And if you haven't seen sea in a while, this will be very different, I'm sure. If you have seen sea recently, it doesn't look like it's going to be that different judging by the stats of the units. Looks like it's primarily going to be a matter of smaller numbers here and there that have changed. Anyway, be starting with that right now. Oh, we have Sactoth in the southwest corner of the map going for, well, going for Shipyard, as is Google Frog. Both players going for Shipyard. Also going for very quick Skeeter attack. And if, for anyone who hasn't seen C in a while, Skeeters now have a disarm missile. They don't deal a whole lot of damage. It's 45 damage, but it disarms pretty heavily. About two of them will basically disarm anything, and I think against each other they basically disarm each other just outright, so it's interesting disabling tool. Also similarly, snakes now actually have a slow missile, or at least, oh it looks like no, snakes do not have any slow missile anymore. They used to have a slow missile, but that appears to not be the case judging by the unit stats. Anyway, disarm wars start! Like a bunch of seaborne racketeers. Although, Sactoth losing out in the disarm fight. And actually, judging by the damage, it looks like the disarm... The actual damage of the missiles has apparently been increased. Not sure about the disarm damage, I'm guessing it's the same as the regular damage. But, yeah, the damage has actually been increased from the looks of it. Last time I played about a week ago, it, or last time I played C about a week ago, it was pretty hard to do any damage with the Skeeters. So it looks like that's been buffed, and Sactoth... Getting the numbers up pretty well. The Google Frog has them up pretty high as well. I'm just gonna move around. I'm just gonna spin the camera around. The sun's really getting quite bright. Sorry guys, this is gonna be a little bit disorienting. So Sacktoth now on the right. This is the southwest. This is southeast. Sorry about this. The sun is getting really bright. So Sacktoth moving in towards Google Frog and nicely getting rid of a couple of their skeeters and disarming another one, getting rid of it too. And that's. I gotta say, I do quite like the way Disarm interacts here. Oops. There we go, that's what I want to see. And... Sactoth... Oh no, never mind. Okay, so apparently despite what the tooltip says, there is... No, never mind, there isn't slow damage. Oh, there is slow damage! What am I saying? Yes, there is in fact slow damage, so the snakes have not been changed much. Slow damage is still there, and it's... fairly interesting. So yeah, that was the, that's was been the biggest change recently, is that Every, pretty much every basic C unit has some status effect on it. Disarm or slow. I think I think typhoons and up are basically normal. But yeah, still disarm or slow for the basic ones. That makes snakes and skeeters have a bit more of an interesting interaction with each other and with everything else. Though snakes are still underwater, which does mean that it's kind of difficult for Google Frog to deal with them. Google Frog, are they going for hunters at all? Or they're going for snakes of their own. So we're seeing Snake Skeeter Wars right now, which at this point Google Frog is starting to win, although Sactoth, the fact that they have snakes and Google Frog does not is a pretty big difference. Google Frog is going to be forced to retreat. Yeah, Sactoth just getting him out of there. More snakes coming in there, more Marins coming in there, and I just realized it's him, but I do know for a fact that Sactoth and Google Frog are a male. But Sactoth is... Sactoth going over around the side, trying to raid out, trying to make sure if Google Frog has built any Metal Striders over here, and they have not. 
while Google Frog on the other hand going around the side to the north and pretty much doing the same thing. But they will find Sackdot's commander, as well as finding an Urchin, which, if you haven't played recently, was kind of nerfed and then now has been buffed again. So its sonar range is high enough, it should be able to see all this stuff around here. But Snake is... Oh, the Snake here, in a nice position. And there we go, going for the harass. Google Frog is going for that harassment while so is Sackdoth going around the back, getting rid of some metal extractors. Sackdoth, are they also hunting down Mariners? No, they are not, but... Yeah, Sackdoth is... Well, the commander is not taking much damage. That metal extractor was. And Google Frog coming around the side. There we go, they're going to be losing a couple metal extractors. This urchin should help out, though. There goes that first torpedo out of the urchin. And that's got to be a major target, but... There we go, it's getting disarmed, and that urchin has been disarmed. Will go down, but Snake coming in to try to finish that off. Sackdoth Snake should be able to finish off Google Frogs. Needs to get the right positioning, and there we go, Google Frog Snake goes down, as does the Urchin, though. The Skeeters at least get in enough to get rid of that Urchin, which is probably not going to be that relevant. Sackdoth is probably going to rebuild Urchins fairly quickly. While Google Frog, on the other hand, didn't seem to take too much damage in the back of their base, so Google Frog is ahead right now. Sackdoth's a bit ahead economically, though. They did get more in the way of metal extractors, and they have some more reclaim to work with. But overall, everything's fairly even. You can see there's not much to be said. Google Frog, primarily with an army composed of Skeeters, while Sagtoth is an army primarily composed of Snakes and... Actually, entirely composed of Snakes. Not even primarily. It's all Snakes. And Google Frog does manage to get rid of one of them, but there's five more coming in. Three more over here, and... No, right, four more. That was the fifth that was in the base. Yeah, a bunch more coming in, and that will be very powerful. Unfortunately, not this one. This one's going to die. It's going to die a ignominious death, but the other three are going to be able to do some pretty heavy raiding. Going around the back once again, figuring out if Google Frog had any metal extractors over in the southeast side of the map, which was not the case. And Skeeter's coming in to finish this off, but Urchin once again helping that out. Helping that to retreat because Zyto does not want it in their base. Google Frog being forced out once again. And more snakes coming in. Surprisingly, no hunters. I'm really quite surprised that. No one's gone for hunters at all to get rid of these snakes. Especially Google Frog. I mean, Sackdoth has just been wreaking havoc with these snakes. Going on this entire north side, or entire east side of the map, going up to the north, is going to be torn apart. The Mariner's going to go down, all these metal extractors are going to go down, and the snake is... Okay, Sackdoth's snake in the center of the map is going down. Google Frog at least is a bit of a blockade now, finally, on Sackdoth's base. But Sackdoth still able to get rid of pretty much everything over the north, and will probably be veering south afterwards to take care of Google Frog's main base. Now Google Frog, on the other hand, not going for the harassment. In fact, forced retreat once again, losing another Skeeter because of the urchins on land. Granted, the Skeeters probably could take care of the urchins, but that's not what Google Frog is going for. Said Google Frog wants to get rid of these snakes, which is going to take a little while because that Mariner. Well, actually, it's not as much as it takes a while. It's rather that the Mariner is going down. Metal extractors going down, everything was lost in the north, and Sackdoth way ahead in economy. Well, Sackdoth, let's see, 29... So Sackdoth's at 30 metal up, Google Frog's at 15. This is... not looking good for Sackdoth. Google Frog still has about the same army value, but... Hey, hunters! There we go! Someone's finally built a hunter! Probably more useful against the snakes, but hey, that's still something. And Sackdoth continues to build up economy over, the west, over on the west side of the map, going north. And Google Frog has not really harassed that out too much, so Sackdoth, slowly but surely, has gained a fairly sizable advantage. At this point, I'm not even sure if there's an easy way for Google Frog to get back in the game. Probably just have to grind through and deal with everything that Sackdoth has. Still... Okay, there we go. Hunter is coming up to get rid of everything. Well, get rid of the snakes as well as it can. And a Typhoon as well! Just get rid of the land stuff, which of which there's not much, but still, anything on land would be turned apart by the Typhoon if it weren't going to go down to the snakes. Still, the urchins are stopping that as best as they can. But despite this, still loses a Typhoon. However, Google Frog kind of taking this whole area here, so all this reclaim belongs to Google Frog. Or at least pretty well belongs to Google Frog, so at least that gives Google Frog a bit of a means to get back in the game. Sackdoth hasn't quite won yet. It's not... Well, it's not really easy to say one way or the other. Zyktos still has an advantage, though, but it is dwindling. 
Goo Frog is evening it up, especially now that they have the reclaim. Now they have all this stuff here. And of course, with the hunters now finally there to help get rid of the oh airplane plant as well. Hunters help to get rid of the snakes and an airplane plant coming in for ravens and vultures. And I think ravens can hit underwater. Not totally sure though. They can definitely hit above water, so at least that's going to help out with any anything above water. Sackdoth has not that there's much. And Sackdoth's commander, the rifle just barely above water to start firing, but. Yeah, commanders can't really fire underwater. Zatoth coming to get rid of Google Frog's main base, or at least damage it slightly, but too much in the way of defenses to get through. And no easy way for Google Frog to get torn apart with this. And I can actually kind of see why snakes were used, because despite the hunters being nice torpedo friggin' and all that, snakes are. Snakes are going to be. Apparently the thing to do. Interesting to note. I mean, on paper, you'd think maybe not, but no, it looks like... Because snakes, let's see. Snakes deal 350 damage every 7.5 seconds, while hunters deal, looks like, about 96 damage every 1.4 seconds. Not sure where their splash is, though. It doesn't really say here. DPS is higher. Range is higher. I think that's the range is the biggest thing. But snakes aren't that much lower. So really, snakes are not going to be... Let's see, it also costs. That's the other thing. 350 and snakes cost 210. So snakes are actually cheaper. That's one thing. Snakes are a lot easier to build up in large numbers. Not so much with the hunters. I'm not sure how that's supposed to work, honestly. I have to ask Rymark. Rymark's been the one been really working on sea balance recently, and that has produced interesting changes. Controversial changes, but interesting nonetheless. Mind you, mostly it's just that it's not quite totally worked out, but it's good that it's being tested. It's games like this that make balance actually work out. And with Google Frog, gonna get rid of an urchin without too much trouble. Probably get rid of the Mariner here. There is an urchin behind. There's a lot of urchins in play. Mostly for Sackdoth, actually. Google Frog, in their main base, they have a few, and this area that had Reclaim on, that they took in all the Reclaim now, they had a few. Raven's coming in to help out a bit. Take out Hunter slightly. This is... It's going to be a bit slow going, but yeah. Helping take out a hunter. Doesn't have to worry about the urchins when it's in the air. That raven has no concerns about urchins whatsoever. No torpedo is going to hit it. Not likely. Anyway, it's theoretically possible, but it's not likely to happen. And hovercraft as well. Interesting. So Google Frog really going mass factory, or mass multi-factory, while Sackdoth pushing heavily into sea. Going pure sea, switching over to Crusader, which will actually might be the better option against the, the snakes. Listed as anti sub, what does it have? Ah, no. Oh, as depth charges. Okay. Not sure what the splash is, though. It never says what the splash is on here, but presumably they're going to have decent splash, so that should help. See how that goes, though. Because I think we saw. No, we saw Typhoons before, not Crusaders. Typhoons do not have anything that can really attack underwater. Crusaders apparently do, though. And yep, there we go. There's the Crusader doing. Well, the thing is most known for, which is artillery support. But admittedly, really 600 damage. Oh, yeah, there we go. Wow, never mind. Okay. I, I was wrong to doubt it. That was my mistake, guys. I have learned from my errors, the folly of my ways, just that it missed. That was the problem. But there aren't really many snakes left for Ghoul Frog. They haven't, they haven't built a lot of snakes. They have, I think, maybe a couple defending, but they're going pretty heavily on surface. And surface alone. Anyway, Google Frog is coming in here with with their entire army, hunters and typhoons, with ravens in tow, and the hovercraft factory building up some daggers just to help out with some extra rating support. And the extra rating support will be nice. The other option, of course, would be to build up more skeeters, but skeeters are probably too weak to make that really work. And Shredder coming out for his fact off the anti air. It's what he needs. Crusader, however, is what's going to work. Honestly, I don't think very. It is, we see, artillery. It is definitely an artillery unit, and it's also primarily used for land assault. Never really seen it used much for ship-to-ship -ship combat. However, it can work if the units are being led well enough. And there are some... Oh, never mind. There has been an effect switch for Amphib from the looks of it. Not sure where. Oh, there it is. Okay, there's the Amphib factory. However, that actually will probably go down to the Hunters. We'll see, though, but it's not something I'm confident about. And we do have scalps trying to throw depth charges at... Trying to throw depth charges 
at the hunters, which apparently skip on the water too. Did not know that. Interesting there. You can do a rock tipping game. Actually, that's a nice little mini game of the scallops. So you can skip the depth charges the farthest. Though I doubt that's physics simulated, so it's probably just a canned thing. However, Sackdoth, gonna probably lose the commander right here. Gonna lose this fusion reactor without too much issue. The hunters just tearing apart with torpedoes, although. Actually, no, that's not gonna be a problem. In fact, this is where Google Frog army goes to die. Google Frog about to lose all of their forces. Mostly the Crusaders, though. The Typhoon's doing a great job here. And the Scallop's trying to help out, but it's unfortunately hard to do stuff when they miss all the time. And Daggers, however, coming in with extra Typhoon supports. Really, Typhoons are turning out to be very reliable mid-game force. Not as much against the submarines, but definitely against everything on the surface. And now we're just getting Typhoon Wars. Not even bothering to go for further snakes, just pure Typhoon Wars. Crusaders as well for Sackdoth. I mean, Sackdoth's still ahead for military, just slightly. But honestly, both players' militaries have just grown this entire game, as have their economies. This map is fairly large, so it's not surprising that, despite the rating, they would still build up. And at this point, it's just a matter of, essentially, who's going to win probably this fight. Now, the Crusaders, as mentioned before, are not in the best position. They are largely artillery units. Can't really do much. And on the water, or under the water, we do have scallops around here. Yeah, there are a bunch of scallops. Five scallops coming in here to help get rid of the Typhoons, which actually should work out fairly well. The depth charges do spread out, but given how bunched up the Typhoons are, I think the depth charges will hit this time. We'll see, though. First, oh yeah, they are hitting. Hitting quite well, in fact. The Crusaders are a little bit too close, but yeah, the Crusaders also dropping their depth charges, and that's doing a nice job. Not well enough, though the Crusaders still getting overwhelmed by the Typhoons, and the Daggers coming in on top of that just to help out. The Scallops, I th think, aren't dealing enough damage. It seems to be the problem. The Scallops do not deal all that much damage. So, it's not really that easy to tell what's going on. Sorry, not... I meant... I was... That was two thoughts in my head at the same time. I apologize. Saying, the Scallops don't deal much damage, so it's not easy for them to get rid of it. Also, given the amount of units here, it's actually getting a little bit hard to tell what's going on. Because I noticed some depth charges. I wasn't sure if they were coming from the Typhoon, but that wouldn't make sense. Possibly the Crusader, because I think the Crusader... I guess the Crusader must be able to depth charge other sea units. Thought it would just be against underwater, but apparently it's against sea as well. But it looks like there is going to be... Well, pretty heavy amount of damage here. For Google Frog. I mean, they managed to push in, but still... They have to retreat. They're going to be taking too much damage if they keep going. And a lot of Google Frog's army, should point out, is in the air. About half of the army cost is actually in the air. And now where is that Shredder? Well, I don't know. Actually, there, there should be a Shredder around here somewhere. I don't see it. I assume it got killed. Oh, wait, no. That's Crusader. Yeah, I don't know. I don't see a Shredder at here at all. All Typhoons and one Crusader. Which is not going to work out too well. However... Ravens doing a decent job against the Ravens, but not enough. The Razors will not survive, and the Ravens get rid of those. Mostly it's the Typhoons that have the problem, because the Snakes can just tear them apart. Tear the Razors apart first, but Sackdoth does not have really any anti-submarine forces. At least not here. Crusader over to the north, which is pretty much the only thing that's going to be able to counter submarine directly. Or the Scallops, that will work too. And the Scallops are coming in, and actually... That's where the ride comes in, managing to get enough shots in there to make it work. And I guess there's all scallops that was coming in. Scallop shells missing. Kind of surprising that scallop shells are not that accurate. Might be a problem. I want to boost that slightly. Or boost the lead or something like that. Because yeah, these snakes are going to take out the scallops without too much issue. The scallops are getting slowed down before getting torn apart. Because those slow torpedoes... Those slow torpedoes are definitely not the easiest thing to deal with. I still like the fact... I, I like it, though. It's kind of cool. Yeah, the status effects on those units makes them have something different than just pure damage. Anyway. Looks like Google Frog is still just pushing out. Now pushing out pure Skeeter. Well, Skeeter into Snake. Going back to the beginning of the game, effectively. At least in terms of unit choice. But I think this is where the scallop's going to shine. The sheer number of units coming in here, they're going to bunch up decently well, and the scallops should be able to tear them apart quickly enough that it will be effective. So Google Frog, oh boy, I got to lower the font size, because Google Frog has 10,000 in army. 10,000 metal in army value, most of which in the air, but still, still 10,000 metal of army value. Not much is underwater for Sackdoth, there's some 
There are some scallops. That's about it. Actually, that is it. There's not even ducks. Oh, there, there is an angler, but that's not going to help out too much. Oh, no. Never mind. Anglers, amphibious... I thought that was archer for some reason. Anglers will be fine. Anglers might help, but they can just surface to attack. But scallops, not at the advantage. I mean, they are getting slowed down by the snakes and also missing pretty heavily. All the snakes have nicely bunched up, so the next scallop shot should be able to tear them apart, but no, goes for the wrong snake, does not go for the group of snakes, goes for just that single snake out in the corner, and that doesn't do any good, allowing Google Frog to get out of there and deal with basically all these metal extractors. The Crusader is going to be a problem, though, but even then, probably not much. Seven snakes against one Crusader will probably be a win for the snakes. We'll see, though. We'll see how well the depth charts works, and the answer is okay. Got rid of one snake. Oh. No, but there's another snake to replace this. Yeah, not very. That didn't work out too well. Google Frog pushing very heavily on all fronts. Underwater, above water, on the water. Putting a huge amount of pressure on Sactoth, and at the same time as the snakes are coming in, Dagger's coming along the northwest side of the map just to tear apart everything here, tear apart all these metal extractors, possibly get to the main base. Not gonna be able to, Actually, no, they will be able to get rid of the Amphid plant because they can hit underwater. But that will be very powerful. So yeah, that... That Amphid plant is basically dead. Scallops doing what they can, and Duck's also helping out, but that Amphid plant's dead. Biggest threat is this Urchin here, and that when that's gone... Oh, actually, no, no, it looks like there are enough Scallops. No, there's no Scallops, just one Duck. And that is enough, though. They managed to break through and damage some of the Urchins, but not enough. Didn't manage to kill off the Amphid plant. But ultimately, they didn't do much good. The Amphid plant just barely above water, too. Still, Google Frog has a massive army advantage and did kind of lock down the production of the Amphid plant slightly for a short period. Coming with another set of daggers on top of that, and I should point out the economy is about even. 74 to 61, that's still huge, but it's about even. Still, Google Frog just about to win here. They have hunters coming along the center of the map. They have the daggers coming in here for the harassment. That's the big story, but. These hunters will be following up, and the Skeeters on top of that as well. A bit of a bit of a fight in the center of the map. Sackdoth trying to force Google Frog's forces back, but still not going to be enough. Does actually have a lot of reclaim to work with, though. I mean, look at the bottom of the ocean. It's got all this reclaim. All bottom of the ocean reclaim, and that is... That's pretty big. So, Sackdoth does have a lot of reclaim they can work from, although it looks like that's the primary source of their economy, is actually reclaim. Not metal extractors. Google Frog does have map control primarily. Has more of the metal extractors, has more of the map overall. Sackdoth's trying to force Google Frog back, which is really tricky given the fact that there's not much. Okay, now Sackdoth's gone for air. Sackdoth does have some swifts up. Google Frog hadn't really prepared for this, but still, Google Frog just get up shredders and tear them apart. Yeah, there they go. Pretty much razors on ship chassis. So that will work out decently well, but even then, the Swiss are able to attack the Hunter slightly. Able to deal some damage, and the Hunters cannot hit above water, so they're kind of hooped. They're pretty much just stuck trying to hit stuff below water, and that won't work out too well. The Swifts just damage them slightly. On the other hand, the Daggers are not the best choice to target, because Daggers can hit above water very effectively. Those Gauss Cannons are surprisingly good anti-air. And surprisingly good anti-everything. Gotta be careful with those. Or rather, careful against those. Ducks coming in as well for Sackdoth. Sackdoth's really focusing on the underwater theater with the Amphib. Has been focusing on that for a while, but it looks like it's starting to pay off now. Admittedly, Google Frog hasn't really focused on dealing with the underwater theater too much. Most of the hunters are over on the north side of the map, where Sackdoth's underwater forces are over on the south side of the map, and Google Frog has not really brought his hunters to bear. And the hunters aren't really doing much. And more ravens going down. The Shredders for Sackdoth coming in here. So Sackdoth has about three. It looks like Google Frog lost all but... No. Google Frog has two. So the air war is kind of getting decided by C at the moment, which is not surprising at all. I mean, this number's come up. It's not surprising. And some boys as well. And yes, it's boys. The British pronunciation... British and Canadian pronunciation. I know everyone keeps saying it should be pronounced buoy. No, that's the American pronunciation. But I'm Canadian. So I go with the Canadian pronunciation of boy. Well, it's the British pronunciation of boy, but, you know... We usually use the British pronunciation or spelling when in doubt. Anyway. Sackdoth actually is exceeding slightly. Or not exceeding, sorry. I should, that sounds like excessing. Exceeding Google Frog for middle income, mostly by reclaim. 
mostly by reclaim, but yeah, that is that's actually fairly effective. So Sackdaw is starting to get the upper hand here, thanks to the reclaim. Has been building up more forces. Does have basically something to answer for each factory. Like it's an amphib. Oh wow, that fusion plant's really close to the factory. But yeah, if amphib, you have air, you have sea. So every theater is answered for quite well. Google Frog, on the other hand, going for Amphib on top of the Hovercraft. So Google Frog going for the fourth factory of Amphib and primarily going for Builders at the moment. Going for a lot of Conscious, trying to take as much Reclaim as they can without having to worry about winning the Above Water War or the On Water War. But Google Frog is going to be still taking a fair amount of damage here. This is going to be difficult. This is... It's for Sackdoth. Still not really getting that solid of an advantage at this point. Now, Google Frog has pushed into Amphib on top of everything else. But like I said, right now it's primarily just for Reclaim. But it'll probably end up going into... Oh, actually, no. It's just Conscious for now. Looks like... Okay, we have... Top level C unit. Biggest C unit in the game. Not biggest unit in the game. Biggest unit in the game is the Cy Serpent Cyper. The Enforcer... That's primarily an above water thing, but yeah, missile skirmisher. This is basically trying going to be able to do what the Crusader tried to do in terms of winning the on water war, but actually succeeding, because the missiles are much more accurate than any of those shells were. The shells that the Crusader fires are basically for anti building. They're firing on land against buildings, but the Enforcer can just tear everything apart as long as it's at range. Otherwise, it just gets destroyed, as we're seeing right now. But the daggers. They're running interference, but not enough running just past the Typhoons and allowing that one Enforcer to die. The second Enforcer won't die quite so easily, but still, Google Frog did lose an Enforcer that really didn't have to go down. Also losing a bunch of Mariners to the Typhoons. The Enforcers, however, will be able to protect the, most of those Mariners. One of them does go down, but the rest of them will survive as the Typhoons getting torn apart by all of Google Frog's forces. And what is Sackdoth going for now? For C? No, still going for Pure Typhoon. Pure Typhoon and boy. Lots of boys now. Wants to slow down everything Google Frog has. Wants to go for the skirmisher route. Which right now doesn't really make sense. In fact, the raider route would make more sense given the enforcers. Honestly, there's not much that enforcers can do to stuff underwater. Although, admittedly, the hunters can help with that, but still. Honestly, as long as these typhoons get close, I guess the typhoons pretty much are. Yeah, assault raider. So they pretty much are the raider right now. The skeeters, they're nice with the disarm ability, which. In this case, it would actually be fairly useful, but not that useful. It would die too quickly. With just this C factory here, no, I wouldn't go for it. I could see going for. I guess there's nothing else that does actually do disarm on the water. So yeah, it's basically a matter of trying to kill the enforcers quickly, and Google Frog can just pump them out. Okay, now hasn't been pumping them out much recently, but can pump them out pretty much one per 10 seconds or so. Now it's more like one every 30 seconds, but still. Could pump them up pretty quickly. And at this point, though, Sackdoth slowly but surely pushing in with the urchins, getting rid of, well, getting some defenses, not really getting rid of the threat here. They can't really reclaim that effectively. Sackdoth can't easily reclaim all this stuff. There's a lot to reclaim, though, I should point out. There's like 4,000 metal just in this area alone. There's a lot of metal to reclaim. Sackdoth still living high off of the reclaim, and I think Sackdoth's gonna win. Sackdoth has come, yeah, Sackdoth has pulled back, so we can see for map control. Just right use of the units. I mean, able to. I think the fact that a lot of the money was pushed into enforcers might have been a bit too much. Those is hunters on enforcers, but still. It doesn't seem to be working out too well. Boys coming in for Google Frog, but this is kind of late. I mean, there's not really much to skirmish against. The Typhoons will beat the buoys once the buoys get above water, and there's ducks as well below water just to help out. Because buoys do have to surface to fire, they cannot fire underwater. It's kind of useless that way, and Sackdoth tearing apart Google Frog's enforcers. One of them goes down, and another few are going to get down fairly shortly. Hunter's coming in to try to deal with this, try to fire in some torpedoes to finish off the Typhoons, but I don't think this can be enough. And, yeah, that's, that is a matter of alpha, really. That's, that's what's making the difference. The enforcers cannot kill the Typhoons before the Typhoons steal some damage. And the boy's above water, but, like I said, it doesn't really matter. The duck can tear them apart below water, and there's nothing the boys can do about that. Torpedo's coming in, and Google Frog throws in the towel. That is game, and a fairly interesting demonstration of what C is right now. Because this is actually a test version of the game, not the latest version, but even later than the latest released version. And that is the state of C 
at the moment on August 16th, 2014. But that's also going to be the last game that I'm going to do tonight, so thank you all for watching, despite the argument about whether I should use they or he. Seriously, I'm using they. I don't care if I know their gender. It's like, yes, okay, I get I know their gender, which is why I might slip into he from time to time, but I don't know. I feel like if I start using they for some people and he for others and she for others, it starts to get a little bit suspect, I guess. Like, why are you using they for them? Well, like, I don't know, but maybe I do know. Maybe it's just that they don't fit into the gender binary, and then, I don't know, I don't want issues coming in for those people, because I know that there are people who have a problem with that. Anyway, that aside, gender politics issues aside, that was an interesting game. A little hard to follow near the end, though, just to the sheer number of factories. <laughs> Three factories for one and four factories for the other. It felt like a 2v2, honestly, with the sheer amount of units being built up. Anyway, like I said, that's going to be it for me tonight. So, thank you all for watching, and have a good night, everyone.